This is a Rimac Nevera. It's an electric powered hypercar and it costs 2 million euros. It's got almost 2,000 horsepower, so I'm going to launch it. Matt, turn the key. Here we go. From 0 to 32 kilometers an hour, sideways, straight into this pole. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Let's start this video by me explaining exactly what's going on here, because I'm not just crashing this car for lols. What's happening is the very last crash test this car has to complete before it can be sold in Europe and in the United States. And it's a pole test. It's actually for the US market, this one. So it's gonna be accelerated on this sled into this pole at 32 kilometers an hour. Now they've already done a crash test like this, but with a smaller dummy than the one we've got in here. This one is for the average size dummy. Welcome to the control center for the crash test. So we've got the car there on the sled. You can see the different camera angles up there and on this computer as well. But I'm gonna use this system to actually initiate the test. And to do that, I'm going to just turn this key here, select the test I want up here, click, do I want it? Yeah, I do. There was a little noise which sounded a bit like someone farting. It's a warning sound that the crash test is live and then all I have to do is turn that key and I'll slam the car into that pole. But there's something we need to do first. I'd like to introduce you to my family of crash test dummies. These are the guys who sacrifice themselves in the interest of your safety. So what we have here are some frontal impact dummies. They have arms to hold the steering wheel, so it's realistic. Now over here, we have the crash test dummy that is gonna be used in the crash or similar. This is called a Euro SID, SID being side impact. Doesn't need the arms because they're not holding a steering wheel. That's not important. It's how the impact affects their head because they're crashing into a pole. So far, Rimac has performed 44 crash crash tests on the Nevera, and this will be the 45th, the very last one. For that, they've used 10 different cars, prototypes and pre-series. So this is a pre-series car. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, 10 cars, but 45 crash tests, how does that work? Well, they can use one car for multiple tests. So you start off with a light test, and then you can increase the severity of the test until you can't crash test the car anymore. This particular car here has been crashed before in a frontal impact. That's why this bit of trim's like hanging off. There's a big dent here in this metal structure, and the there's been weight added to the car to add the weight back in from the bits of trim that have been removed. You might be wondering, why the heck Continental? Don't they make tires? It doesn't appear that they make them for the Nevera because these are Michelins. It's a bit awkward. However, Continental do make the airbags for the Nevera, and that's why they've got this test facility. So when we crash this car, we're gonna film it in slow motion for about half a second, so 500 milliseconds. However, the airbag will decide to deploy in less than 10 milliseconds, and it'll actually inflate within 20 milliseconds. Reason being, it needs to be fully inflated before there is the maximum amount of energy going into the dummy, so the worst part of the accident, and that happens around 50 milliseconds in. Now back to the crash test proper. Now the 45 that Rimac has performed, five are for European law to be able to sell the car in Europe. Then there's 22 for the US market, so they do a few more variables, one of which is the fact that you have to crash test the car with the dummies wearing a seatbelt and not wearing a seatbelt, because in some states, you don't have to wear a seatbelt in a car. I mean, that's just nuts, isn't it? Now, the remainder of the crash tests are some other tests that Rimac want to do to just make sure their car is nice and safe. They're not required by law. I tell you what, it's all a bit confusing, really, isn't it? As is this amount of wires we've got here. So essentially, this car is fitted with about 100 sensors. There's some in the dummy, some on the car, and then they're all having to be recorded and processed by this electrical gubbins here. Then there's a bunch of cameras as well. There's two high-speed cameras in the car. There's some others dotted about the place to record things externally, and that's what this unit does here. Now, as well as physically crashing the cars into stuff such as that, Rimac also runs a load of simulations to see how the car will actually behave in an accident in a wide range of different crash scenarios. Though that's not exactly easy either because it can take a month to actually set up the program to run the crash simulation because you've got to put in about a million different parameters. And then once you've set all your parameters and you want the computer to calculate it, it can take a real high spec supercomputer 20 hours to do the maths to work out what will happen. Now to ensure that the calculations are accurate, RIMAC actually compares the data from those to real life crash tests such as this. And what they found is that they're getting about a 98% correlation between their simulations and the real world, which is highly accurate. 
Manufacturers don't just use these expensive crash tests just so they can tick a box to legally be allowed to sell their car in a certain market. They use it for ongoing development of their vehicle. For instance, in a previous pole crash test, Rimac discovered that by just making this armrest extend out by 20 millimeters, in the side impact it can cause the occupant to rotate slightly like that so that the head is moved away from the point of impact. They also made it a bit softer as well, so it's a bit more cushioning while well, they did that. They also made the seat softer, not for any crash test reasons, just for comfort. Before we launch, I've got to put the car into position, so I've got to take it 40 metres down that way so we can accelerate it into the pole. So I'm just going to use this to get in position. Make sure it's safe. Here we go. Ah. I'm totally in control of this. All is well, people. Well, well I'm, I'm steering a bit wonky here. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. I think that should be far enough. Now, before we do this, I should just explain how this whole sled system works. So basically, you've got a cable there which is mounted to the sled. The cable itself is actually powered by a hydraulic motor because you can build up acceleration nice and smoothly rather than snatching at the car. What it'll do is propel this sled all the way down there. Then two meters before the pole, where it's about to crash, it releases the sled. So it's not being pulled into the pole. It's freewheeling into it, so you get a real exact speed. Before we crash test, I need to paint the dummy a little bit. There we go, nice, there we go. This will show up on the airbag and show exactly how it deployed and how the dummy interacted with it. Maybe a bit of yellow. There we are, darling. Looking beautiful, looking beautiful. Maybe a little bit on the head. Look at that. Look a bit more blue. Yeah, lovely. One last thing to show you before we crash the car. This nail is mounted centrally on this post. There's a white line on the side of the car and after the test, they'll measure up to see how close this nail is to the white line to see how accurate they were, or should that be, I was at launching the car. Okay, we're ready to do the crash test now. So we've got Marcus here, he's gonna initiate the test and then I'm gonna take over. So go on, let's do it. Achtung, we're starting. Matt, turn the key. Here we go. Here it comes. Let's go check out the damage. So here it is, the car's been crashed, quite a bit of damage. First thing I wanna check though, the nail went in the center of the line. That was an accurate crash. The carbon fibers all cracked on the door and it's all shattered down here. Underneath the tub will be damaged, but they should be able to repair that. I mean, you're gonna to wanna to try and repair a car that costs two million euros. Obviously the side windows all cracked. Amazingly, the windscreen hasn't shattered into pieces. It's still in place. The airbag went off. The dummy is quite quiet, but looks all right. We'll get the data back on the dummy in a moment. There is one thing we need to do. The regulations state that you have to be able to open one door on one row. Obviously, this is a two-seater, so you need to be able to open a door. That one might be a bit hard to open, but can this one open? Yep, that opens no problem at all. Looks like a pass. Okay, so we've actually got the passenger door open. It opened pretty easily, just have to remove a few bits of trim which are just snagging it. Open fine. You can see down here the damage to the carbon tub. It's cracked there. Remarkably, the inside is relatively well intact, so that's provided a lot of protection. You can see the marks as well from the dummy that I painted on earlier on the airbag, showing where the head contacted. We just need to see the data now, see what that says. Here we go then, I've got the results here and the good news is that the dummy is all green which means that this car has passed the crash test. In fact, it's passed all of the crash tests which are required for it to be sold. Now, it's not only passed the legal limit, it's actually beaten the target that Rimac set for the car so it's even safer than they'd hoped. What a good result. Mm -hmm.